the worst possible thing that could happen is to have to stop your program that you have worked so hard to get into and you're working so hard to continue in. We were really impacted here in the Una Basin. Um, students were unable to go to clinical sites um, and as a result they were missing out on that opportunity to learn in a clinical setting that really impacted our students and inhibited their ability to gain that hands-on experience. Our technical college really is very hands-on. We have 150 hours for first semester practical nurses and then 240 hours for our second semester practical nurses. There are many different uh, demographics out there in terms of patients that are being served. Um, a lot of them that are more at risk, uh, reluctant to come into um, the traditional clinic setting, um, you know, for fear of catching COVID. The coronavirus pandemic has, has definitely impacted schools and the work of school nurses, uh, especially as students have been um, returning to schools and uh, school nurses have been involved in helping identify students who may have symptoms. When we surveyed all the school nurses in the state, uh, approximately 80% said that they didn't have access to a telehealth platform or technology to do remote virtual visits with students. We have really been able to take real life scenarios and make it virtually possible for us in a safe way that allows us to stay healthy, keep the community healthy and be able to continue on with our education. The platform that we've purchased, it is a cloud-based telehealth platform. The, our providers are able to connect electronically with their patient population and to provide care that would otherwise normally be done in person. The rural providers um, are, are the ones that probably benefit most from this type of technology, given that, uh, you know, in rural communities, uh, there's, there's, there's a greater distance also to travel in order to see your provider. We are going to provide telemedicine kits to approximately 140 Title I schools in all the rural counties throughout the state. In them, we have a thermometer, we have a pulse oximeter, we have a spirometer, there is an autoscope camera, the iPad and a blood pressure cuff, and then all of your connections to keep them running. We have been able to connect and use all of them. With the equipment we were able to purchase with the CARES Act, we are able to offer training for our students here. Um, but not only that, we're able to offer training to the local community. Um, the hospitals in the area are able to come in here and use our mannequins, use our video and audio software and do trainings within their, their departments. We've worked really hard to try to get a nurse in every school. That's probably never, ever going to happen in Utah. We are one of the lowest states that for nurses per student ratio. This will actually help, you know, make that ratio a little bit better. When COVID hit and we were no longer able to go into the clinical sites and actually have those hours, and that's when we started to look for a virtual simulation packet that we could go ahead and use to allow some clinical experiences. We have had uh, 48 of our practical nursing students who have been impacted using virtual simulation. But I really think that this is something you cannot quantify because these practical nursing students will go on to become registered nurses in the next year. And I just feel like you can't quantify how this is gonna help and how many people are gonna be involved.